our first Here it is, day. guys. I'll see you later. You're not taking those minions. Don't take them. Leave them on the desk. <laughs> All right, let's go. Here we go. Gator shot on the lower half of your screen. Garcia Salas on the top. What do we got here, Woody? Well, well for those of you who are just... Plays. Yeah, well, it looks like they're starting off pretty slow. This is a best of five matchup, so they each right. have three decks that have no overlap, except perhaps spells are allowed to be used in multiple decks. Uh, but this matchup, as, as we mentioned earlier, is going to be the Goblin Giant Sparky deck from Gator Shot against uh, kind of a bridge spammy type deck from Garcia Zales. Exactly, and I, I think it was a good thing for you to bring up once again for everybody watching at home in case you are just now tuning in. This is going to be Conquest format here, which we've seen all day, but just in case we've got some new viewers here, walk us through what Conquest format is. Of course, so uh, the players submit three decks before the tournament begins. No deck may have the same troop or building card in it. They may have spells uh, duplicated across those decks, but the players have to win using all three of those decks in right. order to advance. Yeah, right, so since it is a best of five, First of three wins. All three have to be played. And that's a little bit of a challenge in and of itself, I think, is crafting three really solid decks. And I think we've seen here that there are some decks that are just hard to play against, hard to counter if you don't have the stuff and you can't adjust mid-series. Oh, it's certainly true. We saw a, a, a great interaction there over on the left side. Ice Spirit's catching uh, the attention of that Sparky to try to keep it off tower. Garcizala is uh, showing his skill with this bridge spam deck. It, it, it's a deck that you really have to play in a pretty rapid manner, especially against these large uh, decks, the likes of which we've seen now from Gator Shot. Uh, sending in a Goblin Giant and a Sparky is pretty difficult to deal with, especially when it's backed up with that Mega Minion uh, to try to deal with the Inferno Tower. But so far, pretty even trades on the left side. Uh, nothing really connecting the first couple minutes. Yeah, a little bit of damage there on the two left towers for these boys, but nothing super, super intense just yet. And now we are into double elixir. One minute left in this matchup. Let's see what's going on. Ooh, Snowball spreading those barbs out a little bit. Yep, Barbarrel on the ground also manages to catch them and keep them distracted for a little while there. Sparky's charging up, trying to get a shot on tower, but Inferno Dragon and Magic Archer able to take it down. Yeah. That's going to be a big push Here up the left comes lane. comes the ram! Connects on tower, and that's going to be at least a few swings from those Barbarians. Sparky takes it down, but can't shoot at those flying targets. Minions are going to start swatting the tower down to 1152 now, and that's a big inroad for Garcia Zales. Something that you got to really be aware of when you're playing against uh, a bridge Span deck like this is that you cannot let them gain control of the lane. This is a deck that performs extremely well whenever it's able to just hold that bridge and just add on troop after troop after troop to continue uh, building up pressure, especially against a big deck like Goblin Giant Sparky. Uh, you really don't have any opportunity to let them gain control of the bridge. Oh, that uh, was a nice snowball to back that uh, ram up and let the Sparky get a hit on that. Unfortunately, those boys are not going to be doing any damage there. we still got time. we got another three minutes to go here. Oh. And Garcia Zalas is perfectly happy to switch lanes, even though he's right. got an advantage over on the left side. If he's going to allow that battle ram to connect, I think that he's pretty happy uh, about the damage he grabs there. It is a two for four counter in Gator Shot's favor, so this could be an opportunity to push left lane, but he doesn't have any of his big tanks out in front. He's just trying to send in a Dark Prince, and uh, once again, I think it's a little bit too little to connect tower. Yeah, that, uh, that dragon's going to take him down. Oh, here we go again. One more push there on the right side here. The ram coming in, going to connect with that tower. Some good damage coming in there. Garcia Zalas is playing really well, he especially is. given a deck uh, that you typically just see a lot of troops kind of just fired off one after the other. He's playing very smart uh, in making sure that this Sparky doesn't get a single shot on tower, but it's getting awfully close now. There's going to be a lock there from the Dark Prince. Makes it onto the tower. He's getting several shots off. That's going to be a block from those Barbarians on the backside, preventing the Sparky from getting the hit in, but that is what Gator Shot was looking for. Finally a landing, uh, a blow on that right side tower, Allie. Yeah, it's looking it's looking pretty good, but look at this retort, this return on the left-hand side. Look at the range also on that archer. That, that That's just devastating. Yeah, He's Magic scared. Archer has some of the like longest that. range in the entire game, and he uses uh, to take down those small troops really yeah. quickly. Really clearing the path there for the Ram to go in and do that big damage on the towers. But again, the Sparky just devastating them there on the left side before he can really get that big hit off with the charge. I just feel so bad for this Goblin Giant just getting burnt up by Inferno Every Dragon time, every I time. know, every time. And Mega Minion is a decent counter there. Giant Snowball can knock back the Inferno Dragon and reset the charge of its beam, but it just doesn't seem to be uh, good enough in this case to get the Goblin Giant on the tower. In fact, the only damage Garcia Zalas has gotten uh, so far was from a uh, right side hit from the Dark Prince. So let's see if he manages to make it happen this time. Yeah. That's going to be some guaranteed damage from Magic Archer in left lane, though, if he just soaks it. That's quite a bit. Oh, 
He's committing to the right side. Goblin Giant's actually made it onto the tower and it's stabbing it down really quickly. Lightning could be enough to finish this game off and I think Gator Shot's got it. Can he get the hit off? There it is. The win, beautifully done. Excellent to close out that match. That's our first game in the series. Well played, GG. Garcia Zales was playing beautifully in the first three, four so minutes well. of that, but I think that Gator Shot just... It'd, it'd be incredibly you, You'd be a princess on the tower, right, Allie? I hope so. I'm not going to be on the ground. I can't fight. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here we go. Maybe maybe you'll be the, the magician brewing up the spells in the maybe background. Maybe I will, yeah. yes. I'll just, I'll just be like an advisor somewhere in the bottom of the King Tower, like, yeah, you're yeah, doing you great. Should do that. You oh, look yeah. great. You're the one who like crank, Keep going. cranks the, the cannon up, <laughs> activates Yeah, the I'm, a, I'm the cannon operator. That's me. I stay hidden most of the game anyway. I'm fine. I like that. I accept that. I love the bandit. I think I would be a bandit if I could be anything. Ooh. I do like her. She's speedy and fun. She is. Yeah, she can dash pretty far, too. All right. Let's get in the back. Following the ice goal. Is it golem or golem? How do you say it? Oh, that's that's a question that'll go down in the ages as uh, something that will remain unanswered. If I you, think it's probably as, Golem. As but... many people that say Golem will say, you know, there's another mini that'll say Golem. Well, now I think there's, for me, it was just confusion because of the character Golem. So it's like, maybe that's oh. where I'm getting mixed up. It doesn't matter anyway, who cares? Snowball, Barbarian's off the deck. We're just kind of, we're chilling. I think I if you ask, say... to ask a purist, they'll, they're, they're more likely to say Golem, but. Really? I, I pretty much say Golem all the time now. I say Golem too, I don't know. I know that it's like some kind of folklore. It's it's a it's a character formed out of typically clay, some anthropomorphic thing. I don't know. It's fine. Don't worry about it. It's the end of the day. I don't know. The balloon is down. Baby dragon. Ram rider coming out. Dangerous opportunity to strike here for Garcia Salas. Yeah. He's trying to get that balloon onto tower, but it looks like it's going to be a little bit short, especially with the ram rider knocking it back. That is not going to be good enough uh, to take it down. And you know what? I. Uh, I think that these decks are actually not the ones that we saw preview. They're not. I was going to say, this yeah. is not what we saw. I know that was, those were decks that they are using, but it's not actually in this matchup, what we're right. seeing. That's OK. So, so uh, we do have the pick up from Gator Shot, but not Yeah, not Garcia's the deck is, yeah, not, is not the real. That we were expecting. Which I think they probably figured out before we said that. But it's OK. We're all just working together here. It's a good time. Fighting time. Giant Snowball knocks the Miner onto the King. A crucial misplay from Garcia Zales dropping that Miner back there. Gator Shot's going to get a big advantage from having his King Tower activated. And uh, you're going to have to do double duty now as the cannon operator in the final uh, scene. I, I, I'm, I'm up to the challenge. <laughs> Put me in, coach. Here we go. Baby Dragon finds a lock on tower, but Garcia Zales manages to knock it off using oh, that. Uh, Ram Rider's going to get distracted again. Ooh, charges into the Inferno Tower, but that right side is really low. Gator Super Shot low. could just switch to Lightning Cycle here if he wants to go for a safe option, but looks like he'll continue to apply pressure to that right side lane after all. And so now, what are we looking at in terms of, is this is this this double elixir for the deck that Garcia's has? It's not what we thought. So gonna, Garcia's gonna also is actually going for an all-in push out the left side. That's knows that his right side tower is going left. down, and so he's going to send to the balloon, the miner, the whole kitchen sink doesn't manage to get the tower down, but got it a whole lot closer than I expected. Oh. Very well played to him. And with Garcia Zales uh, dropping game number two, Gator Shot is now in a 2-0 lead, Ali. We might have Gator but can he prevent the sweep? This is it. This is his chance. We'll see if he can do it. I guess Gator he, I, Shot with a 2 lead here. Yeah, a 2 lead for Gator Shot. I think that Garcia Zales played a lot better in the first few minutes of the first game, but I don't, I don't know if it's fatigue or if, if he just didn't have the, I don't know. a good deck matchup after that, but he hasn't been uh, doing much better since then. Yeah, I mean, it, com it comes down to that. We've, we've, we've touched on this, I think, a few other times, but he really is, it's a lot of pressure here. There's a lot of money on the line, and this is not an environment that everybody necessarily feels comfortable in. You make quick mistakes, that kind of tension and nervousness might compound and cause you to just continue to misstep. And those, those kind of micro errors are so critical, especially at this level of play. They can be critical. I got to tell you, Allie, there's uh, 90 plus cards in the game and each player gets to build an eight card deck. I'm pretty sure that there's more card combinations than atoms in the known universe. And yet we still have the exact same eight <laughs> card deck from both of these players an absolute mirror match uh, on both sides. So we'll just have to see who can pilot it uh, to victory. Uh, I, honestly, I, it might be, match. I don't know if it's necessarily, I don't know what, I don't know what the right word to use is here. Pre not, not predictable, but I know that there are things that just work. It's tried and true. These guys have put hundreds and hundreds, and in some cases, probably thousands of hours into this game. So I understand that they know what works. But like you said, just, it's just those fine 
opportuning moments, those waiting for an opportunity to strike and actually really knowing, playing with patience, playing with focus, that's going to get you that victory here. The We've loon is out. Minor loons from both players. This time it's uh, Gator Shot's turn to attack, though. They're both running that Inferno Tower on defense, so that should be enough to shut the balloon down. We were yep. talking about that earlier. It's a really easy way uh, to distract and make sure that it doesn't go toward tower, but uh, they're both playing primarily on the right side lane here, and... Uh, that's an easy shutdown of the Musketeer, and once again, yeah, Balloon's just gonna get pulled right into the Inferno. I had a question earlier. So with the with the Loon explosion, is proximity damage a factor? Is it a is it less damage, or is it just a damage radius that's all the same? Uh, it, it deals the same damage to the Same anything. damage in the area. Okay, yeah. I just wanted to double check that, because I was not sure. I assumed that was the case, but thank you for clarifying. This is why we have experts, folks. I've got the questions, he's got the answer. Now this is a bit of a backwards push from Gator Shot. The Musketeer actually is out in front of the Ice Golem, so uh, that forced a Barbarian Barrel down there from Gator Shot to try to glide, managed to do so, and now it's gonna be more Musketeers stacking up over on the right side. Musketeers and Ice Golem plenty. <laughs> Shutting down this balloon now with an Inferno Tower in the center, and uh, I think most of the damage that we're going to see from this game alley is going to be from those miners sent directly onto the tower. Yeah, just chipping away out there, living their best lives. I was talking earlier about how funny it looked to have a miner just running down the field if he's used defensively, just kind of moving around by himself. And there you go, there's another miner out. Ooh, Musketeer pushing up the right side, though. I think Tower's going to be able to take care of that. We're in overtime, sudden death, let's go. It is an absolute mirror match, but hold on, that balloon got awfully close on the left side. I thought it was going to be a drop, but it's just going to get the death damage there. It seems like Gator Shot prefers to go for this split lane push and is happy to kind of play left and right, trying to get Garcizales off of his game. Uh, meanwhile, Garcizales has been pretty much only focusing on the right side. You're starting to see, even though they're playing the exact same decks, that they have a little bit of a different play style right. here. And with a card like Balloon, all you need is one drop, and you can really swing the momentum of a game uh, from one lane to the other very quickly. Yeah. So I, I, I like that Gator Shot is willing to play both left and right side, but if Garcia Salas uh, manages to keep that defensive up, I think that he'll be able to claim the advantage uh, by focusing over on the right side lane there. I like to see these Barbarians going at all. The Barb Brothers going at it. All right, let's see what this Balloon can do. Will he make it in? The tower is down. Probably not. We're just going to keep seeing that. The dangerous thing is you got to burn up that ice golem and then refocus and try to burn up the balloon. You saw right there Gator Shot sending in a miner to try to distract the Inferno Tower, but it's still not enough. Yeah. There's just plenty of defensive firepower from Garcizales uh, on top and bottom to be able to deal uh, with those complex pushes. Nevertheless, though, he does manage to get a few chip shots in there, and the miner brings the tower down to 1668. Oh, look at this. The balloon coming in, the miner out. Will he be able to get down the Inferno Tower beforehand? He does. Giant Snowball took out the skeletons that were surrounding that miner, and this is going to be a difficult push. Can he keep the balloon off? No! Balloon gets the drop, and Garci Zales is now pulling far ahead. Going to continue to pressure that right side lane with balloons. 494 damage left on that right side tower. Will he be able to make the same smooth play to get that balloon over? I don't think so. No. The balloon parade continues. No more hits on that right side, but <laughs> Garcia Zales is going to keep on sending them in anyways. This is going to be a race that is not going to go in Gear Shot's favor. He's going to have to block once again with that Inferno Tower, and it looks like that means he will not be able to commit too much to that left side. Nice giant snowball, but not going to get any damage on tower from that. And does that balloon death damage connect? No. Yes, yes it, it does. does. Right side is going oh down. Oh, my goodness. No. Just need one more minor hit. Or 30 left. Snowball. There it is. Garci Salas takes game three. We've got ourselves a matchup here, Woody. Let's go. Potentially the last game. Hopefully not. We love a bit more Clash. When we can get it, we'll take it. Light Sama is leading the cheers in chat for another reverse sweep. <laughs> can Garci Salas pull it off? I think he's got a decent shot here. He, he's not an underdog against this minor loon deck with either of his two remaining uh, options here. And because he played so well in game number one, I want to give him... Uh, you, you know, he, a fair shake here, but sure. I, I think it's probably better uh, to still assume that Gator Shot's going to be able to pull a win off against uh, at least one of these decks. Yeah. Garcia Zales. Let's we'll see what happens. Musketeer just making her way up downtown, walking fast. Face is fast. Sorry. I have to. She's homebound. She's homebound. <laughs> her home is just when she's sitting God, there on the you. tower, firing away. That's what exactly you're such where a good. You're such a good sport. I'm such a dingus, and you're just rolling with it, and I really appreciate that. What kind of co-caster would I be if I'm out here just shooting you down all the time? Yeah, you, know, yeah, you, you might as well right. call me Lucy May. <laughs> <clears throat> I'm going to hide under the shade real quick. Take a little mental vacation. <laughs> Furnace is down. 
And this is one of the big reasons why this giant uh, Royal Giant Furnace deck has got an advantage over the Balloon. It's yeah. got a cheap four for five counter to shut the Balloon down, dragging it to the center, and lots of counterattacking opportunities. Now, in the first couple of minutes, you're not going to see um, much of a chance for that Royal Giant to come on out. But once Double Ultra Time kicks in, they're going to start rolling in from Garcia Zellas. Garcia Zellas will be making some moves. Oh, the Bar Barrel. I love it. I think it might be one of my favorite cards. I don't yeah, know why. It, I just love it. Well, it, it's pretty versatile. You know, it, it's, it doesn't uh, get much of a chance when the matchup is, is, is so heavy like this. The, right. Obviously, he can't hit a balloon, and the Royal Giant isn't too afraid of one single Barbarian. But uh, it works well against those guards. Looks like Gatorshot's going to take actually quite a bit of damage from the guards out on the left lane. But yeah. instead, just to focus on the right. Can he get the balloon in there? It's going to deal that damage at least. Gets the hit off. The no miner way. soaking so much damage for that push. Great value for Gator Shot in that exchange. 832 on that top right tower, but now maybe we'll see a little bit more aggression intensity coming down. We're in double elixir now. Let's see what happens. Electro Wizard. Just cycling through elixir here yeah. on the right side. Gator Shot's putting some skeletons up, but he's not going to be able to connect with this push. Looks like Baby Dragon, Electro Wizard, and Furnace is going to be an absolute roadblock here. That wasn't his main goal, though. He was just trying to distract out in front for a miner to get some more chip damage out in back, but Percy Zell's got a great catch there with those guards. It uh, looks like Garcicellas is now switching out to Lighten to try to get a little bit of chip damage out that right side. He's not able to get a single Royal Giant into play yet, though. And I think that might be his downfall at this point, Al uh, Allie. Why? I mean, OK, there it is. I was going to say, I don't know if there, it, we just haven't seen it because he's just been starved for Elixir. He's just been, here he is now, but he's kind of on his own there. OK, now the, the minion's coming down. Barbarrel's down. Gator Shot was bleeding a little bit of elixir there, but he had yeah. to do it in order to get the perfect placement on that Inferno Tower. Burns up the Royal Giant without too much trouble, but the, the big deciding factor here now for Garcia Salas is do I want to spend my guards on defense to try to catch miners, or do I want to try to spend my guards on offense to soak damage from this Inferno Tower? Unfortunately, because that right side tower is so low, I think he's more often going to be playing guards on defense. The fact that he didn't right there, and you see yeah. that miner connecting, is several hundred more damage for Gator Shot. Here they come, little furnace boys running up. Little fire spirits trying to jump little, into the action. Little fire boys. They're, they're, they're <laughs> hey, they deal a lot of damage. They and, do. Uh, and I, again, I, the versatility of the ground and air, air targeting is, is, is wonderful. Oh, absolutely. That's another swing for the Miner out on the right side. No big spell in Gator Shot's deck, so he really does need that cycling damage uh, time and time again. He does have a little bit of uh, cushioning here with that Furnace out in front, and the E was wandering in, so yeah. I think he figures he's got enough time to yeah, send in the Royal Giant. a little time with that. But th this is pretty much the last opportunity for Garcia Zellis to try to get the win here. He, he probably will be able to defend against uh, this Balloon, but the Miner's going to get several more chip shots off. Oh, 272, it's so close! Gonna catch, oh, couldn't catch that uh, Inferno Tower. Now, he does have Lightning in this deck, so that is another avenue that he could try to play to take out this Inferno Tower, but we haven't seen him have enough elixir in that sort of push right. to be able to pull it off. Instead, he's going to go in with the troops. He's going to get quite a bit of damage. In fact, forces out a defensive miner from Gator Shot. This is a tricky scenario for Gator Shot. Garcia Zala is able to get uh, a, a Mega Minion pretty close to the tower, but I think that that should be enough to keep them off. This is sort of, sort of turning into a bridge spam, though, Ali. Oh my gosh, that's massive damage oh. coming down. Fire Spirit splash onto the tower, taking it down to 287. That is awfully close. I think we got lightning oh range. Takes my. it out. A sec Targets onto buildings, and so sure. you would often assume it's going to be uh, the primary push factor there, but Garcia Zala has had a lot of different ways to get damage in, and sure. managed to just stack it up on tower. And like you were saying, we didn't even really see the Royal Giant that much until much later in the game, but it wasn't even necessary. We never even really saw He just kind of tanked away, soaked some damage up to allow those other little chip attacks to do their damage, do the work. Gator Shot grabs a two for four pull using that Ice Golem to keep the Lumberjack away from tower and the giant snowball onto the minions had a nice early start here. He's gonna have to deal with a battle ram out the right side though and uh, Inferno Tower will get the job done. Yeah, that works. There's, there's still to me nothing more satisfying than rolling over an entire swarm with a bar barrel. I, I, I just think it's the most satisfying experience. Squish. Ever. You just, just a little splat. It's even more fun it's in 2v2 gone. when they, when they've got like a <laughs> goblin gang and a princess, <laughs> a skeleton army. And like, all oh really? Oh, nice army you have there. <laughs> blah, 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 blah. And it's gone. Bye bye. And it's gone. Oh, you love to see your fireball. A classic. Edward, why does it hurt you? Oh. Get the log rolling straight over you. Are we at that, are we at that time? Okay. <laughs> He's in trouble. Look, this is a 2-2 matchup. We're super close. The deciding game of this set. And uh, 
it's relatively dead heat. As yeah. we said earlier on, uh, our, our friends over at Stats Royale predict that this is actually only a 0.4% advantage for uh, the deck that Garcia Zalas is running. Uh, you couldn't ask for a better way to end the day out. Oh, absolutely. I, I, I love to see the tension. I love to see the even matchups here. And, and I mean, Garcia Salas has proven that it is. He says, you know what? I see your first two wins, and I'll, I will match you with two. I will call. Here I am. And now we're in a game five for a shot at the semis. The loon is out. Here he goes. Making it to the doesn't make it to the tower. Got a bit closer, but every sure. time you fail to connect with that loon, that's just going to be a little bit more chip damage coming in from those minions, the magic archer, peeling a, a few more hundred hit points off the tower. And I got to say, as, as we've seen before, whenever you are running uh, the same deck back to back to back, you can expect your opponent to start to get a sense for the pacing of that sure. match. Garcia Zalas is playing very well uh, in this game, despite not really having much uh, uh, of a way to really shut down this Inferno Tower. He's poking and prodding uh, and taking an inch Anytime Gator shot uh, even lets up just a little bit. Yeah, every opportunity that he has to chip away at those towers, he is taking it. And yeah, you're 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 right about that. And I and I like to. Uh, oh, here we go. The balloon's gonna serve as cover and distraction. No. Oh, that's gonna be a knockback for the giant snowball balloons. Getting awfully close. Barely misses the drop, but that's going to be a great death damage strike over on the left side. Garcia Zalas is going to have to hit back hard right now if he wants to take advantage of this big elixir uh, clump that he's been able to put together. Inferno Dragon with minions over on the left side, a Lumberjack and Magic Archer on the right, but Gator Shot shuts it down. Send it packing. That's no additional damage on the tower for him to claim. And this Bridge Spam deck, despite being great at just being able to snowball and, and, and turn that uh, little advantage into an avalanche of destruction, has not been able uh, to crash down on either tower so far. All right. Oh. I, I, <laughs> I just keep getting distracted. I'm getting distracted here because I see damage going in, and I'm so excited about the balloon connecting with the tower. It does once. A little bit of damage on that right side tower. That one hit is incredible, though, for it's Peter huge. Shot. That huge. absolutely puts him far ahead. Now, we've seen plenty of times where he's been able to use that Miner's Cycle for just a bit more chip damage here and there. And and once again, he's able to play both lanes. He even if he's got a huge advantage over on right, he's sending a balloon in over the that's left. Gonna be, that, that's going to be huge damage on the left side as well for him. Oh, those skeletons are not going to block for the Inferno Dragon. It actually manages to lock on tower. That is really bad for Gator Shot. The Inferno Dragon burning that right side down to 621. A crucial misplay in double elixir time that could cost him the game. Are we going to see an upset here? If I expect an upset, <laughs> it's not an upset. So I'll say no to that okay, question. Okay, that's fine. That's fine. We'll, 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 we'll keep it together. We still got a minute 37 to go. And I'm not going to say it again. I'm not going to say anything enough. Oh, unfortunate placement there on that Barbarian Barrel. Magic Archer getting several shots off of the right side tower. Gator Shot not happy at all about that. And with the one final with the fireball. fireball, Garci Zales is your semi-finalist from this matchup. And we have to say goodbye to Gator Shot, who looked so strong in the opening with the first two wins. Subscribe. Subscribe.